Hello everyone and welcome to Rebel Way. My name is Andrew Sutherland and today we're going to be creating this volcano effect. But before we jump into the overview of this project, I'm just going to quickly demonstrate how we can set up a simple sim from scratch so you have a better understanding of what we're doing before jumping into the overall project for the volcano scene. So just starting out is I'm going to create a geometry stop. I'm going to dive inside and we're going to put down a sphere. And because we've got a quite a large scene, I'm going to put down a transform and transform this up a hundred times. I'm going to zoom out. We've got a selector on our camera here. And I'm going to reduce the scale in the Y direction. So we have a flat disk like this. So this is going to be the initial source geometry for our pyro simulation. But what we need to do is we need to cover this in points that we can feed into, which we can rasterize and as a density and then send that into the DOP simulation. So what we're going to do next in order to do that is we're going to put down a pyro source, wire this up. And as you can see, we now have some points on the surface of our geometry. What we want is we want to um, create a put it as a volume scatter that way it's going to fill our geometry up with points rather than scattering on the surface so now we have a lot of points actually too many and it's, it's slowing up my computer but so I'm just going to change this resolution here so now we have less points you might want to do this first and we want to create some attributes so under this initialize, we're going to say set this to source smoke. And that's going to give us a density and a temperature. So these points now have information on them. And that information is, you know, density and temperature with the scale with the value of one for each. And what I want to do is I want to just give this some breakups. So I want to put down an attribute noise. As you can see, we now have got a noise all over this geometry and it's giving us red green and blue information which results in all these different colors and we don't actually want all those colors we just we want to float so a vector means um th uh, three values so in this case r g and b and we want just a float which is just one value so we're going to change this over to float now we've got black and white and our element size is a bit too small here. So if we scale this up to something like 10, we now have some nice breakups in our in our in our um, in our information here. And let's maybe animate this noise over time. So now we have this movement, and let's give it some more. And let's give it some more breakups. So. Let's click on here on this offset and now we can, this is a float value. We've only got one and now we're going to convert it into a vector here. So now we have three values here and I'm going to say dollar FF times 0 0.4. Let's see what we get. So this is moving pretty fast. If we want to move this slower, we could maybe put a value like higher value no um maybe even lower value 0 0.01 we're not seeing much movement now okay something like that that's cool and currently we're noising up the color but what we actually want to noise up is the density and the temperature but just to be 100 percent sure that we are getting breakups is that, um sometimes i don't like just putting in density here or temperature because it's a bit difficult to see so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to put down a blast node which is going to blast everything but what we want to do is we want to just delete the black value so i'm going to say at cd and we're just going to take the red value because we're dealing with a flow chair and greater than 0 0.1 so now I think we need to clamp these values a bit I'm going to click on this enable remap 
I'm just gonna create some more contrast here. And then when we come to this blast, I'm gonna set this to points. And now we've deleted all the black points, but kept all the white points. So before and after. Now what we can do, let's copy this node and we can say, instead of the CD, we're gonna put density and temperature. Cool. So just like you saw with the breakup of that, of the color, we're also creating a breakup of density and temperature. Next, we're gonna create another attribute noise. Let's copy this again. And this time, We're going to randomize a vector field and that vector is going to be velocity. So if we come to click on these point trails, we're battling to see it because our amplitude is a bit low. Let's turn this up to 10, 100 for now. And now we can see we've got some breakup and well, at least we've got some, some um, velocities to work with. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to set this to minimax. Let's set a minimum value and a max value. And here we're going to set this to minus 50. Minus 25. Minus 50. Those are going to be our minimum values and our maximum value for the upward velocity is going to be 100 so you can see this is all just going straight up but we want to have some directional values too so let's set something here like 50 and 50 and now we do have a bit more variation in the sides let's just compare that quick yeah, so that's straight up, and now that's a bit more directional. So next, let's rasterize those attributes. Because in order to pass this data over to um, Pyro or our DOP simulation, we need to rasterize those and get, uh, convert them into volumes, basically. So volume, rasterize attributes, and the attributes are density, temperature and velocity and these are all layering up on each other so if you want to just take a look at each one individually we can put down a volume visualization node and now we're just looking at the density the temperature and the velocity cool so from there we're going to feed that into our dop network so we're going to put down a dop net and we're going to read into the first context geometry and we're going to want to import this data once we've set up in dops so we're going to put down a dop io we're going to read in this dop network and here we're going to put down a smoke solver let's use the sparse one a smoke object a volume source and send that out set our voxel scale a bit bigger to one let's actually turn this brain off while we're working on this we're gonna set this to source smoke we need to tick off here and then back to source smoke our input is our first context geometry and make sure we click on enlarge fields to contain sources and as you can see now we're sourcing density temperature and velocity so as you can see we now have a pyro simulation running so let's just jump back out here copy our 
smoke object. I'm going to paste that in here. We're going to set this to smoke. And the only thing we want to cache is the density for now. Well, in the setup. We're going to want to create a shader for this. So I like using the pyrobake volume to do that. Let me give this just a quick look. And then I'm going to put down a pyro post process. And this is just going to make our density a VDB. And we're going to convert it into 16-bit float. It's just that the data that comes out of DOPS is uncompressed. So it's quite a large um, volume file. And so in order to, do, if we do this, if we convert to VDB and we convert to 16-bit float, we're going to save some disk space without uh, really affecting the quality too much. So after that, we're going to put down a file cache node. Just go and add, change this to explicit and save this to disk somewhere. And we make sure we want to load this from disk. So let's just quickly cache a few frames. Cool. So I've cached a few frames, as you can see here. And we've got this basic pyro simulation going. But this is pretty uniform. And we want to create some breakups on this volume. And we're going to do that using micro solvers. So if we come back here and jump inside the stop network. And we put down a merge here. We can merge in some extra forces. And then those forces are going to be micro solvers. And these micro solvers are just going to create some breakups in our in our simulation and give it the appearance well it's going to give it a lot more detail so the first one we're going to want to add is some dissipation we use a gas dissipate and we're going to give a very low value of zero two something like that and we're going to add a gas turbulence let's set the scale to three Swirl size to 8, pulse length to 10, and the turbulence to 3. Turn the control field to density and set this value to 5. And the best way to get these values is really to run wedges. So what I like to do is copy this parameter come over to here and put down a font node we dive inside and you can see this is reading the frame number let's just make a duplicate so we don't and paste relative reference so this is all the way down at the origin of our scene so let's just create a camera quickly zoom out and let's link let's link this font node to our camera so as we move the camera around this font node will move with it so this is our scale and this is on our gas turbulence We can set a color, make this yellow, pressing D on our keyboard, we can set the background to black. And now we can tell 
our values by looking here on the viewport. So if we run flip books and we save them out, we can put all the values that we play with here. So let's add some more. Coming back here, we can add swirl size. And this way we can run some flip books. And we can save them to disk and we can investigate by comparing these values and the result, which settings that we want to set as our final settings. That's what I do a lot of the time when I'm trying to dial in a look of a pyro simulation or a water simulation or whatever it is. So let's jump back and take a look. So let's jump back and take a look at these settings here. So we're going to create some breakups with this gas turbulence. We're going to add. Let's let's crank this value up. Let's see what 300 looks like. And for now, we might want to increase. our resolution so just so we get a faster feedback that's too low So we can definitely see now that that turbulence is affecting our simulation. I think this is too much. So let's keep working on this. Let's add some more micro solvers like gas disturb. Let's hit this to block mode. And the block size, because we work with quite a, we, we want to, um, this is basically going to go, this is going to control the, the, the size of our details. So what we can do to get that value is we can just put down a box and that is a value of one, the scale. And so if we put a block size of one, we're going to get details about that size. If we put a value of six, we get about that size. So let's go back. Let's put a value of six here for now. Maybe we can add another one with a smaller detail of, and let's just, let's just keep it a six for now. And then let's run another flip book. Okay, cool. So I've added a few things to our scene. So like we've got our hip name here, for instance. So this is the name of our file. This is our frame number. This is our voxel size, which is coming from which is coming from here. This so we've got the voxel size here. We've got our buoyancy. Which is coming from here. If we want to see this once we jump inside, we can pin this viewport. We've got this gas dissipate from here. We've got our scale on the gas disturbance, our swirl size, and our turbulence. And on our gas disturbance, we have our strength and we have our block size. And you can add more of these as you go um you know as you start wedging different things you just add it to the the font node and you can do more and more tests now if we take a look at this this is pretty uniform and we are getting some stretching so you might want to play with automating this value maybe we start up higher and so something like maybe we put like a hundred at the start 
and then we can bring it down to say 45 and then reduce it to something like 25 especially if we're going to add something like divergence and what divergence is is the expansion of this of this um, volume so if we wanted to do that what we could do is we could just add another field here we could say we can take the density field and we can feed that into divergence and we could automate this divergence so on the first frame we could have a divergence of 150 and then on frame 5 come down to a value of 3.5 say and then on frame 10 a value of 1 so now we should see some divergence let's run the sim again okay cool so and I now have the simulation with some divergence I'm not worried about this flickering in the viewport because that's not going to be uh, seen by the renderer but you can see we do have a lot this is a pretty uniform in terms of of um, details um, and but I'm trying to show you the most simple setup possible to get started working with PyroFX and the workflow that I with this wedging that I like to you know so I can vest I can look at this this result and I can compare with my settings and we you can see we're also getting these lines and that's that's coming from the let me find a frame where you can see it these sort of lines here this breakup um, those lines are coming from the sparse feature so I do often like to run my final sim with sparse turned off um, and and another thing to note is that we are hitting the the bounds of this box so we want to add some more padding so let's come over here and I can increase the padding here this default was set to Zero point five. So let's just give it a bit more padding, and we can as increase this as as we need. Um, the other thing is that we might want to add the divergence to our to our wedge information. So let's come over to this volume source and with dense divergence. So we're going to copy this. I'm just going over this again to. Yeah, so I'm sure that you guys know how to do this. And let's put it with the here. Cool, so now we can see our divergence starts at 150, is very high. And we've got this gas disturbance also very high at first. And let's maybe move this information the gas disturbance let's put it up here with the divergence or actually put the divergence down here so we can look at those values together so we start off high and then that trails off and obviously, this is, uh, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible to get you started with, with creating pyro effects. Um, pyro can obviously get a lot more complicated very quickly. Once we, once we try to like create certain masks and we only want to create noise in certain areas, um, we only want dissipation in certain areas, and creating those masks can get a bit more uh, technically um challenging or um you know creating very specific types of emissions at the beginning and of course we have an entire course on this and i um, unfortunately can't turn this video into an entire course but i just wanted to get you started with a very simple setup get you started with a with a workflow for with working with pyro and now we're going to jump into a the the final volcano scene where we can look at a finished project 
and dissect that and go through that and get you comfortable with that file so you can open that file make changes of your own and hopefully use it in your own way cool so i will see you in the volcano volcano scene next bye as you can see we've got a few elements here we've got this mountain we have this volcanic plume we have the smoke coming off the lava we have these trails and of course we have these particles which make up the the lava and the other thing that we're using is a box that we're going to render out as a volume fog so let's dive into this mountain and see how that was created and we're using hot fields for this mountain and like in most things in Houdini, what we want to do is we want to sort of make a make mass and then affect a certain area. So a height field is kind of like a plane, um, you know, like your standard grid. And this is actually, and this is actually um, volume information. And what I've done here is I've put down a mask paint, and I've just drawn a circle in the center here. And this is just like a, a paint node, except it's used for height fields. And it's, it's the layer is set to mask. And you know, this is just like the size of your paintbrush, really, like and you do in Photoshop. And you come over here and you can, you know, draw whatever shapes you want. And from there, I'm blurring this out. So we're using this height field blur. And we've got a radius set here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to raise this into like a sort of mountain, mountain shape, all pretty standard. Here we're doing a reshape and this reshape is kind of like a, it's like a remap. Like if we were to take like a, a cylinder for instance, and we had the curve view along, um, you know, the, the, the Y axis. And then we can just reshape things. That's essentially what this what this remap is doing is that we're just remapping these values. And by doing that, we can make this indent in the top of the volcano like that. So if I if I were to put this up, you can see that we've now got this flattened out. And if I bring this down. You know, we, we, we're indenting this, this sort of hole in, in the top of our volcano here. We're, of course, finding the height of this thing by actually uh, computing the, the range. So if your setup is slightly different, if you're trying to create something different, you click on this compute range. And then, you know, then we've got this map to work with. And it's basically just like a, a an attribute going from the top to the bottom. And we're just remapping it like that. So from there, we're going to put down a noise, which is like a mountain node in SOPS. And we're masking that out with that mask. And we've just affected where we've got that painted area. And this is pretty similar to what we do in SOPS with a, with a mountain node. From there, we're going to distort this everywhere. So we're not using the mask this time. It's the same thing, but yeah, no mask. And we're just distorting this, giving this an all over distortion. And from there, we're gonna put down a height field um, erode. And this height field node is kind of where all the magic happens. And this is going to create, you know, rivers and valleys and all sorts of cool things um, that are give us give us a lot more realistic detail. And this node kind of just does a lot of that for us. If you come over to this visualize tab here, I'm not using this, but if you click this on, you can see we've got, you know, the, where the water is and d different types of of um, elements that you could use. So you could scatter trees on certain areas, you know, based on the color, scatter rocks, and you could take this a lot further. And of course, Riverway has a, an entire course on creating environments and we can go a lot more into depth into, you know, using nodes like these hot fields and, you know, creating your own mass and, and stuff like that. But just to keep things simple for this tutorial, 
Um, these are the settings that we've used. You know, we've got some we've got some hydro erosion. We're just going to create these um, these rivers, and we've got some thermal erosion and water flow. These are all our settings that we used in this project. So I'm just going to turn this visualization off again because in uh, the reference and in the original file, it was just a very a simple um, um, volcano. And with the lava um, illuminating the scene, we couldn't really see too much in the shader. So I just kept this pretty simple. Um, so from there, we're going to convert this because this is actually a volume. If we click on info, you can see that these are all volumes. And what we want to do is we want to convert this into polygons. So just like a traditional geometry, we're going to put down this convert height field and that's going to convert this into polygons. And if we click on info, we can now see we've got points and primitives and we're going to put down the smooth, which isn't doing too much. And this is getting pretty heavy. So we're going to cache this out to disk. And I just have this saved somewhere on a hard drive and that should prevent crashes and stuff like that. So got this cache to disk and from there I'm going to put down a wrangle and what this wrangle is going to do is if I enable it, you can see we're going to flatten out these edges and it's also going to drop this, the edges minus 10 meters here so if we turn the go back here and if we were to change this value here let's let's make a duplicate of this out here and if we were to change this to say 500 you're going to see it's going to shrink in and this is kind of like the fall off so let's lower this as you can see we're shrinking this in and then this is going to be our how far it's pushing this down so if we make this like minus 50 you see we're dropping that lower so this this is going to control how low it is and this is kind of um you know how far in we're shrinking and this is kind of like the fall off so that if we come back here to our original settings you can see we now have this bit flat we're going to poly reduce this because currently we've got a lot of polygons to work with and it's pretty slow so that took about five minutes to uh, poly reduce this and we're just keeping 10 percent of the polygons here so before we had 17 million and now we're just down to 900,000. And we're not using this attribute transfer, so I've just disabled it. But if there are any attributes that you want to transfer from here onto here, you can use an attribute transfer node. And then once again, we're just going to save this to disk because we want to work with uh, this lower polygon mesh. And so we're using this wrangle basically like a clip node. And we're just removing anything you know, below minus one. So you could, you could do the same thing with a clip node pretty much. If we put down a clip, pretty much exactly the same thing. Yeah, except this is minus one. So now these should match up exactly the same. Except this one's just done in a wrangle exactly the same thing and it just goes down you know minus one from here we're just rotating the mountain because we're working from a reference you know something like this and what we want to do is we want to reshape this volcano to get something a bit more like this so with that in mind we're going to create this wrangle and what we're doing is we're calculating the domain like the like if we were to put a bound on this we'd get like a box so we're creating a box and then we're just going to remap the, the this y-axis here so this is, is it 
exactly like what we did earlier. I think, believe we did it here on this remap node. We're, we're doing the exact same thing that we did with this remap, except we're going to be doing that in this wrangle over here, not this one. This one here. No, this one. So we're going to be doing this remapping here. As you can see, we've got all these points. And if I were to move this, we can manipulate this height. So we just move this around. You know, don't go too crazy, although we can make some extra points here if we wanted. You know, maybe we could, if you wanted, you could maybe make a pyramid. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just messing around just to give you some ideas here. But you could remap. You could remap these these values, but you know if you don't you don't want to distort it too much. Just subtle changes to to get the the, the overall silhouette of the mountain in the direction that you want. And, and we're going to be doing that a couple times here. So as for that one and this one. This guy's not doing much at all. It's our overall height. So we can make this bottom bit lower by messing with this and the higher bit lower by messing with this. So you get the idea. It's exactly like that height remap. So here we've got a VOP. And we're taking the position and we multiplying that with a noise and exactly the same thing. We're using this to calculate that, that box. So like the bounding box and we're using that and we fitting range that with this, this ramp. And that's going to give us some control over where we add some additional noise. And as you can see, just this top portion is getting noised up. So if I undo this, you can see we're just introducing a little bit of subtle noise to the, the to to the top. And if we were to increase a section here, we would introduce noise down this side. So we can control where we want noise, and we can control the fall off for this line. So this setup is just going to give us a whole bunch of control over our mountain we're getting that box again and we're going to this time shrink this in towards the center so if we were to push this down as you would suspect the bottom part and then this part is the top part and obviously, let's remove this so we can control this a bit. Yeah. You get the idea. And depending on your reference, you can see may, this part's kind of going out a bit here. So maybe we want to do something like this and just move that top part in. This part will be probably around here you get the idea and once you get that close to your reference we just save that out to disk again and here we're going to create a VDB version for our collisions and here we're just going to save this out as our poly reduce mesh so here for the volume we just obviously going to extrude this as you can see Without this, this is kind of like a very thin piece of paper. And we need to create a volume for our, um, for our collisions. So we're going to extrude this with an extrude volume node. 
and that's going to give it some thickness and yeah it's gonna give us a bottom and that way we can now vdb from polygons We're creating a SDF field or a surface field and we're saving that to disk and putting a null for our collisions. Here, once again, a poly reduce. So we can make this lighter, keeping 10% of our polygons. We're deleting our attributes so that this can be read faster and rendered faster. Yeah, so now we're just down to 80,000 polygons. We're removing everything. So this star means we're removing everything. And if we put the attributes that we want to keep with this little arrow, I've forgotten what that's called. Um, and with this attribute delete, if we put a star that deletes everything, and what we can do is we can just you know, select the attributes we want to keep and we put this little arrow thing, I've forgotten what it's called, but that's going to make sure that we keep those. So we're keeping those and we're deleting everything else. Save that to disk and put a null for our out. And that's our volcano mountain. Pretty cool. So if we come back here, we're going to create our VDB version. And what we're going to do is we're going to put down this extrude volume node. And if we click on this flatten base, this is kind of like creating like a, like a polyfill. And so now we've got this bottom bit and we've got some depth. So now we can create a VDB version by just putting down a VDB from party from, from polygons. And we're creating a surface field or an SDF field, sign distance field. And so now we've got a VDB version. So let's save that out to disk and put down an L so we can read that into our collisions. So all our simulations are happening in this um, geometry SOP. So let's dive inside and take a look at what we've got here. So first of all, we just got an object merge and that's going to read in the geometry of our mountain. So where we put that null, we obviously just, this I can delete. We can take this geometry, copy that and paste that in here. So we've just got this mountain. And next, we've got an attribute delete just to clean up this geometry and we're deleting all the attributes on that. And I've just got a null just for organization purposes, but the main thing that we need to do is a group. And I have this group set to bounding sphere. And what that does is it just creates a sphere as you can see here. And I can, you know, move that around just to make a selection. You could manually select polygons on this, you know, something like that. But because I wanted this to be as procedural as possible, I used a bounding sphere. So as you can see, that's our bounding sphere and we're just selecting the opening of this volcano. From there, we're gonna put down a blast and we're just going to keep the non-selected parts. Uh, put the switch here. I think I was just trying out different selections, but uh, not actually using that. So from there, we're just extruding this a bit to give it some thickness. And then I'll put down a null and that's going to be our geometry light if we choose to use this as a light again this looks i think i use the exact same thing uh, this one's slightly this one's smaller so this is just 
you know, I've decreased the size a bit. And we put down a group. And exactly the same as before, we're just selecting this part. Extruding this again. Transforming it up. So we now have something like this. I'm just, you know, moving this extrude back part. I suppose you could have done this all in the, the poly extrude, but you know, that's how it's done in the file. And then we need, you can see this, these polygons have this purple color. That's because the, the, the normals are in the opposite direction. So I put down a reverse node. Now we have some clean geometry and creating some normals. And then we're going to put down a pyro source node. And that's going to fill this up with points, uniformly fill this up with points, as you can see there. And we've got this set to source smoke. And so we have density and temperature. These are the attributes um, that we find on these points. And yeah, as you can see, these point attributes, it has density, position, P scale, and temperature. In the original file that I was working from, um, this was all manually selected and once I ran the sim, I found that there was just too much smoke. So I've put an extra um, group here just so that you can control the amount of smoke. So if you feel like you don't have enough smoke in your scene, you can just come here and you can, you know, extend this. Or if you feel like you've got too much and you want less smoke, you know, you, you've got a bit more control over how much is actually being emitted here. So with that, I've just made a, another group and I'm deleting everything but that selection. And then what we want to do is we want to noise up this, those attributes because this is very uniform. Everything has the same value. All these attributes have the exact same value here. So with an attribute noise, we can noise up the, the, the density and the temperature. And you can see we have, um, this is evolving. If we were to rasterize those attributes and we put down some sort of visualization to check so now we can just take a look at this density so if i were to disable this you can see it's completely uniform and now with this noise we've got some breakups and if we play this you can see we've got that evolving there and that's just based on this offset here so if i were to delete this you'll see we still have some evolution and that is coming from from here but let's go back yeah cool so now we've got that sort of so we now we've got some breakup on the density and we've also got it on the temperature so if we were to change this to temperature, you can see we have the same thing there. So we also want to noise up the velocity. And as you can see here, now we have some swirly velocities happening. If we disable this, nothing. So we've created velocity and we've noised it up. Very similar to what we've done with the density and the temperature, we're just using the V now. So we now want to rasterize those attributes because these are all on points and this rasterize attributes just converts that into a volume so which we can use in our DOP network. So we now have this is VDB and these it's all blacked out now because we've got multiple attributes laying on top of each other which is like why I like just putting down this volume visualization node so we can just take a look at one at a time so this is this is going to be our main um, source for our emitter but we also want to add something a little bit more dynamic to that so once again we're back here and we're going to run a pop simulation so we're feeding these points the points of these polygons they're going to go into this 
pop network and as you can see we're sourcing the first input uh, first context geometry so we're using the first context geometry that's just whatever is plugged into the first one here these are the settings that we're using And we have an upward velocity, as you can see here, this is the Y component, so pointing up. We have a bit of air resistance. So this is just gonna um, make our particle simulation just look a whole, a, a lot more realistic because there's, there's sort of like, oh, it's not quite a drag, but there's just some resistance in the air. And as you can, and as you can see, this random function is that we're randomizing the, the air resistance based on the particle ID. So each particle is going to have some sort of air resistance, but it's not going to be uniform. It's going to have some variation between 0 0.2 and 1. And the overall air resistance has this value here. So if you wanted more resistance, you could increase this number. If you wanted less, you know, you could lower that or just disable that to, to see what that does. And this is just a very simple pop network. So we have our pop object and we have our pop solver. So if we jump back out and we run the simulation, I'm just going to make our background dark again. You can see we now have this burst. Cool. So we're going to put down this time blend node and what we're doing here is that we have interpret in between frames and that's just going to give us more information as these particles progress through the scene you know we're calculating the in between frames and um, we're also going to trail this let me turn this off and we have a trail length of 10 and as you can see we now get these lines as it, as the velocity goes up we get those lines so with this trail node we're now getting 10 times the amount of points along the velocity so before we just have one point and now that's trailed 10 times and we get these lines again we're using a time shift and we're just shifting the frames by four frames so instead of starting there if we jump four frames forward that is now here so we've just shifted the simulation a bit next up we have this point wrangle and I've done my best to go through all these wrangles and write notes for you guys. So when you take the age and you divide by the life, it gives you some information that we can use in the simulation. And I've just created another wrangle here to illustrate exactly what's happening. And as you can see, these particles, I'm going to change back to white light again. They start off white and then they fade to black. And all I did in this wrangle is I said exactly this, what's happening in here, except instead of feeding this information to the density, I've fed it to the color. And that way we can just visually take a look at what's happening with the simulation. And as you see, that's what we get from that age divided by life. We, we're also taking a value of one. So we've given the color a value of one, meaning white. So it's going to be white. And we're timesing it by um, one minus it. So that's just going to negate this this color. If, if I remove this, if I remove this, we should have the opposite. So now it's black and it's going to go white. But we're negating that by, by doing this one minus. And so... In this node, exactly the same thing, except instead of color, color, we're using in density. 
So the density is going to be higher at the start. And as it gets up, the density is going to fade off to zero. One meaning white meaning one and zero meaning black. So next up, just like we did before, we're going to put down a attribute noise and we're going to noise up that density and the temperature. And this is exactly the same node. I think this is a copy paste from, from here. So we now have some variation on those trails too. So what we're doing in this wrangle is we're normalizing the velocity. So making sure our values go between zero and one. And then over here, we're multiplying the velocity by 50. And then we're making sure the X and the Y velocity, so the velocity, you know, going this way and that way are set to zero. So we only have a multiplication of 50, 50 up. And if I put... Let's change our color again you can see we have this velocity going up before it's going in all directions but we just want an upward velocity and I've just put down this one to um, to exaggerate those settings by changing this to 500 you can see that's essentially what's happening is all those velocities despite them going out in this direction we want the velocity just to go up so we're using this wrangle to do that. Once again, we're going to rasterize those attributes and we're going to feed that into the stop network. So if we dive into the stop, these are our micro solvers. So these are these these nodes are going to be responsible for the details that we see in our simulation. But the main the main nodes for some for basic sim is our smoke object, our smoke solver, and this we're using for sourcing. So in this one, we're using this head to the first in context geometry, and this one to our second context geometry. And as you can see, from the second one, we're just using the velocity. So we're not using this to source any density, we're just using this upward velocity here that we see here to affect the velocity. That's going to essentially like push our, velo our smoke upwards. And in this node, we're sourcing density with a value of 0 0.1. Make sure you have enlarged fields to contain sources that make sure that our domain sticks to where we're sourcing geometry. And here we have some divergence. And what divergence is, is the expansion of our smoke. So if you think about an explosion, you get that initial expansion of smoke and then it goes up. That expansion is what we call divergence. And you can see that this is automated here. So in the very first few frames, it, we, that smoke expands, then it stops. Till we come over to frame 10, you can see now we just have a divergence value of one so we have some divergence throughout but you know a much lower value than initially set of 150 and we have our temperature to ensure that our smoke is going to go up and we have our velocity if we feed that into our sim we've got a voxel scale of one so this is going to control the resolution of our of our simulation. A lower value is going to make it higher res and a higher value is going to make it lower res. On our smoke solver, pretty simple stuff. We've, we've got this time scale set to 0 0.5. So a lower value here is going to make things um, seem bigger and slower. And a higher value is going to make it seem smaller scale and faster. You can see we've got quite a low buoyancy here. So the, as you would imagine, this being a large scale smoke simulation rises up appearingly quite slow. We have some gravity here, just the standard gravity settings. If we come over to our micro, micro solvers, this is what gives the simulation some detail. So if we come over to this wrangle, we've got a gas field wrangle here. 
and we've got a few if statements here so let me just separate this out and so the first one is if the density is greater than 0 0.002 we're going to make the density zero and if the y position is above 1500 meters then the density becomes zero and if the frame number equals two then the velocity upwards is going to be 20 and the frames larger than 14 but less than 24 then our velocity is going to be almost one this has just been turned down a little bit to uh, 0 0.995 and I've I've run a few simulations here so just just to illustrate what what some of these things do because they can be a bit difficult to sort of imagine but here this is our first simulation with with that wrangle as is and you can see we've got the smoke going up like this this is the second one and I've just commented out the the density equal equaling zero and so if we compare this I think both would work but also let's check out i think both examples would work for a volcano um so you can try that out and then this one i've commented out on the y position so not too different between these two but quite a big difference when you put the you know both of them this is just going up a lot more so that's the result that we're getting from this wrangle next we're dissipating next we're dissipating the density this is like um, the evaporation of smoke so we've just got the field and we're using the the temperature as the control field and the evaporation rate is 0 0.2 so just a bit of evaporation then these are our settings for our gas turbulence yeah so just so these are the settings for our gas turbulence we have a second gas turbulence we have a gas disturbance and i i kind of think of the gas turbulence as like the overall sort of breakup of the of the, of the mushroom and the gas turbulence disturbance i should say I often think of as the smaller detail on the simulation and you can see that we're automating the strength of this gas disturbance so it's it's going to be stronger in the beginning so our gas disturbance is got a value of 500 at first and in the first few frames it's pretty aggressive goes down to 150 and then it becomes it trails off at 45 so the 45 is sort of constant and these first few frames because we've got that divergence and it, it sort of the, the smoke sort of expands out we, we lose a lot of detail in that section so we want to automate our gas disturbance to maintain some of that detail through that divergence period or well, the period at which the smoke is diverging I should say and next up we have this gas advect field because we have this divergence field um, we, we want to advect that every frame because this you know this we run through all these nodes on every frame and we want to have this advected properly so we, we we're advecting the divergence and we're advecting that by the velocity and as you can see here we should want to match this with this so you should probably copy this and paste this here it should match it doesn't in this actual file on notice but it's best practice to make that match and one thing to note is that um, y if you're new to this divergence uh, stuff it's because we're using the smoke solver and the pyro solver has its own combustion model built into the pyro solver and so it does all that divergence stuff for us but this is a bit more of a manual way of doing things and controlling your sim and it's it's quite good to to play with these sort of things doing them manually advecting your own fields because you get a you get a 
if you practice that way, you, you get a good sense of what the solver is doing under the hood. So we're not going too crazy here, but we do have that extra divergence field and we, you know, we're using a smoke solver for that instead of the pyro solver. So after that, we just got some more gas turbulence, just for more breakups and some wind. This is just blowing in the X direction. So that's it for our smoke solver. We also have some keyframes on our sub steps. So because we have this quick expansion in the beginning, we've got higher sub steps here, but then once it gets here, we're not, you know, there's no gigantic movements in the sim. So we can afford to bring this back down to a value of one. So I'm just going to delete these because we no longer need those. Those are just some tests. And we put down adopt IO and then we're going to import this. So you can just drag this up here and it's masked by this smoke object. Paste that in there. And we have this post process node and we've got ticked on the compute minimax. We have this look applied to it. So just a white smoke, a low density value here. And that's about it. Cache that out to disk, save it somewhere on your hard drive. And what we want to do is we're actually going to retime this a bit. So we're going to make it feel a bit slower. So we're going to delete our attributes to make this work a little bit faster. I'm just going to keep that name attribute and then we're going to apply a retime node and we're going to slow this down by half starting at frame 58. Here we have a switch so it's going to play normally and then after frame 58 it's going to change. So as you can see we're on input one. And there. So we're going for the normal one and then we're taking over into the into the into the other one. And then once again, we're just gonna cache this out to disk and we put down a null for rendering. So next up, we're going to take a look at some of the particle simulations for the lava. So this section here, this is, that's all for our smoke. And here we're going to take a look at some particle stuff. So coming back to the selection, because we're working from that, putting down a null here just for organization purposes. And here we have a wrangle. And we're using this wrangle to set some velocities. So if we come here in this one, I've just exaggerated the setting so it's easier for us to see. So I'm just using this to illustrate, but this is the one that we're using and we're creating a velocity upward velocity. So these, this is like the tail of the velocity. So the, the, the velocity is actually point shooting upwards. And we're, we're, we're creating a, a box here to get the very center of our emitter. And we're using that box to, to create a distance um, attribute. And then we can use that distance attribute to remap the velocities. And as you can see, what I've done here on this one is I've just increased the velocities. So if you, if you wanted to play with your velocity settings, you just change these two numbers and this is the, the values that we see here. So if we make this one five, you can see we now reduced the velocity in the center. And if we wanted to reduce the velocity on the outside, You can do something like that. But these are the final settings that we used in the sim and they're pretty subtle just between one and 0 0.3.
and then we're going to subdivide this mesh so we get even more points see before now we've got a lot of points and we're going to noise up the velocities so these are going to have a lot more swirl if we dive inside we can see that we're going to take the position and a turbulent noise and this is just a multiply constant so we can multiply that value up and once we multiply that and export that as velocity we get this swirly motion and we're also creating a the the length the length of that noise and we're exporting that as an attribute called r cool so we can use that attribute later on and we can take that attribute and we can multiply that by two and as you can see here we've got some color information and we're computing the power of that that attribute and the power in um to me often looks like um like a contrast so if we look here you can see that this is you know a bit more um less contrasty and here we're creating a lot more contrast contrast with that power and if we feed that then into the pop network we get this cool explosion of particles and so of course we're taking that first in the first context geometry we're adding that pop wind node that we did earlier and as you can see we're randomizing some of the air resistance based on the id these are our settings and this is just everything that we need to set up a pop sim and here we have a static object which is going to create our collisions so we set that to volume sample and we're reading in this mountain vdb so if we come back out here to the mountain we take this vdb we copy it dive inside and we paste that vdb here and that's going to give us this collision so if i play this a little further you can see our particles are colliding with this mountain of course we have some gravity and this gravity force has been turned up a bit it's usually you know nine point nine point eight let's just change this back to minus 15. cool and we're going to cache that out so that gets saved to disk and then we're going to do another pop sim so coming back up here this time this is a bit smaller because i wanted less particles for this effect and i just deleted you know based on that group and i sent that into a pop network again exactly the same thing yeah exactly the same except this time we don't have we don't have this noise and we don't have this but this is so this is basically the exact same sim without this added noise and you can see the difference this one's more uniform and this one is more organic looking and coming back up here and coming up here we have a third pop sim so once again we're using this to make another selection cool so i've just made a few notes for everyone as you can see in this wrangle we're removing any points that don't hit so as the points come up and they collide with our mountain 
they have an attribute called a uh, hit number. So if we go over to our geometry spreadsheet, you can see we've got all this hit information. So what we're doing here is that we're just going to remove anything that isn't being hit. If we were to comment this out, you can see now we have all the points and now we're removing those ones that haven't been hit. So that's what that's doing. And next we're going to color our particles. And I explained earlier that age divided by life, which gives us sort of the age of the particles. So as they start up, they start white and then they go black over time. And we're negating that value. Um, so let me just Let's make a copy here quickly. As you remember, they start off black and we're negating that, meaning that we'll get the opposite effect. So instead of going from black to white, so they're going to start off white and then they're going to go black. And so what we're doing is that we're giving the, the color value of 12 divided by the, the hit total times by the color of the r red information and then we're multiplying that by that negated age and dividing that by three and just to illustrate what that is actually doing let's take a look again let's make a copy let's comment this out Let's put down a copy to points so we can see this a bit better. So with this commented out, we have that. And here, They're just going more black. Cool. And here we're just removing more points. So if the total hits is greater than seven, we're removing those points. And here if the distance from the first input um, is greater than one, we're removing the point. So essentially what that's going to do is it's, that's going to remove points close to the emitter as you can see we don't have any points in the center here if i were to comment that out you can see we've now got those points close to the emitter back again so let's just go back and lastly we're taking the very whitest of the points um anything greater than 0 0.9 and we're going to create some randomization on those very white points so if we come somewhere here we've got a lot of white and we comment this out well, in fact we should comment this out first and then find a section that's very really white you can see there's a bit more randomization in these points now let's do the copy to points thing again You can see it's, it's a bit of a subtle difference in this example, but we are taking the very whitest of points and we, 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 we randomizing the values a bit there.
Cool. So next we're replicating those points. And we, so for every point, we're going to have 20 more. So this should be 20 times the amount we originally had. And we're going to randomize the velocity on those points. As you can see now, we've got a bit more randomization on those points. And then we're going to send those points into the first context geometry of the pop network. And we've done a lot of this before now. Where we're taking the first context geometry so we have this pop source here and we you know we've done this before but one thing that's different here is that we're um we're creating a group called just born we have an inherent velocity uh, of 0 0.25 so on this wrangle you can see we've got that just born at um that group and what we so what we're saying here is on the frame that the, the particles are just born, so on the frame that the particle is first created, they that frame, it goes into a group called just born. And we're going to save that to CF. So this attribute is storing the points on the frame that they are born. And so what we're going to do with that CF is, you see here how we've got this CD, and we're negating that value of age divided by life. So if I display that, you can see as these go on, they start white and then they go dark. So as they start, they're white and as they die off, they go black. That's because of this. And, we, and in this wrangle here, we, we're doing the same thing here, but we're using that CF attribute to do the exact same thing. Essentially, what we're doing here, we're creating that attribute where it goes from white particles to dark particles. And then all we're doing is randomizing that a bit. We could have just done that the way that we've been doing it before, which is just, you know, um, using this plus some randomization. But this is how the, the original file was set up. And if you take a look here, it's not a big difference really. If I switch to this one, let's take a look with this. We can see it better. See, there's not really a gigantic difference. And like I said, this project was set up by Hang Young, who's a very talented effects artist. And um, that's how he did it. He did it here. Sometimes he used the, 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 um, this, this way. And in this case, he's using that just that CF attribute that he created. So if we come back up here, let's explain this pop network again. So we're creating that CF attribute. Then we're adding some wind resistance with a random factor. Here we're fitting the velocity between 1 and 0 0.9. We have this for our bounce. Our pop solver. We've got all these attributes turned on. Our collision object and as you can see we now have this pretty cool lava effect So to give that some color, we're creating that ramp. So it starts off white and then it's going to go dark as time goes on. And we're going to take those very, the whitest of those points, the very white parts, and we're just going to randomize the color a little bit. So they're not pure white. So we're going to have some randomization throughout the simulation and again i think this was done just to tweak things to the to the artist's liking and again so we're, we're creating that white to black over time fall off and then we're randomizing it and then we're doing it again a different way so it's just the same thing really over and over again until the artist got the effect that he likes and this is how this ends up. Let's cache this out to disk. 
well first we're going to group this so first we're going to group this so we want to group for our first sim the uniform one the one that's a bit more organic and now this lava effect hitting the mountain and then we're going to feed that into this wrangle and then what we're doing is we're just shifting the particles up and down off the surface of the second input so the second input is coming in here and that's just our mountain and we just kind of like jittering them on the surface by pushing the the particle just slightly off the surface of the of the mountain along the normal and so if we were to let's go a little bit further let's turn this off and if i were to disable this you can see it's just sitting above the surface and that it's not moving uniformly there's a bit of jitter in that and that's all been done by this and that's being handled by this wrangle here so we're not using this but if we come down here at this wrangle and so if we come to this wrangle here we're creating the p scale and we setting a p scale of one and then we're multiplying that by the color and clamping that color between so the the darkest colors are going to have a value of 0.2 and the brightest colors are going to have a point a color of 100 so if we disable this and we copy to the points you can see these are all uniform but if you notice once we turn this on the lighter dots like this one here the lighter points they're going to get bigger and these dark points are going to get smaller so something like that from there we're going to put down a color node and we're going to read read in the cd and we're going to remap that range from zero so the zero being black to one white being that so the lightest points are going to get this color and the darker points are going to get that, that color and in between this is what we get cool from there we're going to just delete the attributes that we don't need and once again we cache out to disk again um i was just playing with ideas in the renderer so i was messing with the particle scale again again these are just some variations yeah so i think this scale is correct but we can experiment once we get to rendering with 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 these um with these um vops here just to control the the particle scale again that might actually look correct this comes to my camera yeah i think this is correct so this is the settings that i used when rendering and of course we need just to create some velocity so we can get some motion blur and then we've got a null here for reading into solaris if we come over here we're putting down a time shift node and we've got this interpolate between frames we're blasting everything except for group two which is the the sort of dynamic uh, the dynamic pop simulation that we did with some velocity noise on it we got a time blend node with scale velocity and one over um, dollar frames per second. We're putting down a wrangle again. And here we're going to keep some points based on their size, making sure that they're not the points that have hit the, the mountain. And then we're going to delete randomly some of the points. And this is what we end up with. We just got a selection here of points. And those are going to fly up. And we're going to delete um uh, some attributes on there just for some cleanup and in this point wrangle we're gonna vary the the and here we're gonna vary the color on these so we've got some variation and we're not using this and this attribute delete we're deleting the age and id and we're going to replicate those points five times so we're going to jitter those points every frame they're going to jitter we're going to transfer the, the color attributes and the velocity and then we're going to feed that into this pop simulation
So if we dive inside here. These are our settings, like before. First context geometry, constant birth rate, a bit of pop wind. We've done this all before. Yeah, just a simple pop sim. And now we've got these super cool trails. I really like this. This looks awesome. Cool. So we put down a null for our trails. Yeah, so this is super cool. And um, when, before I take it to render, I'm going to convert these into VDBs and render this as a volume. But I'll show that. Um, but I'll show how to render this in the next tutorial I upload. But essentially, we just do use a VDB from particles and convert this into a volume. This is looking really cool. So the last thing that we need to do for our simulation is come back over to here where we've got this lava effect. And what we're doing is we giving the very whitest parts again um, some variation in the color. We're taking the older parts, so the black the black parts, and we're giving them some randomization. And then like we did before, we're using that just born attribute, that CF, to give some more variation. It's just another layer of variation. So if we just comment this out, it won't be too different. We're just layering up the effect really. And this is, I think, just um, just the choice made by the artist. If he was, you know, tweaking things just to get the look that he wanted, but you could comment this out if you're happy with it as is. It's not going to make too big a difference. So again, here we're making a selection. And like we did before, we're using that second input to delete the particles in the center. Then over here, we're, we're deleting the points that are on the other side of the camera. So we don't see these points. So there's no need to include them. So we're just using this like a clip, just to clip this along the Z direction. So this here is deleting these points in the in the in the in the center. We did this before. As you see see now they'll reappear. So we're just getting rid of those and this is clipping our particles. This again, we're just jittering those points along the normal. So they sit just above the surface with some randomization. And coming over to this node, we have another wrangle. So this wrangle, you can bypass, delete, or j just leave it as is. It's just essentially creating an attribute called what, but we didn't end up using this in the DOP simulation. So it, it really has no effect on the sim whatsoever. And this is just like what we did before. We were setting a P scale and we're giving it some randomization based on its color. So. The darker parts will be smaller and the whiter parts will be bigger. Then we're going to rasterize those attributes. We're going to rasterize the density, temperature, and velocity. That way we can feed that into a DOP network and we can run another smoke simulation. And our smoke simulation is starting on the 54th frame. And if we dive inside, we can see that our basic setup is the, and our basic setup, of course, is the smoke object, our smoke solver, our volume source, and some collisions. 
and then these solve these micro solvers are for the detail and this is just like we did before we've got that wrangle we've got some dissipation the turbulence more turbulence gas disturbance more gas turbulence and some wind this is pretty much exactly it's an exact copy of what we had before except this time we no longer have that divergence so we don't want the smoke to expand we just wanted to create some sort of smoke that comes off the off the lava so we're reading in our density it looks like we do have some divergence here but i notice in this file we're not advecting that every frame i guess it's, i guess in this case it's not necessary so a little bit of divergence temperature and velocity because this is obviously a very large scene we have a large voxel scale of 1.5 and we have our collision I'm sure you guys are now familiar with this as we this is exactly the same sort of process that we did with the smoke plume so from there we're going to put down another dop io read that in read in that that dop network the smoke and read in the smoke object put down a post process node and this can this is what we can use to generate our shader or we can use to um just control the look of our density or smoke and then of course cache that out to disk and now we have this awesome smoke sim cool And as for our simulations, that's it. We've now covered the entire network. Cool. So that's pretty much it for our simulations. Um, I've just changed our camera. So I've pulled this back a bit. And I'm animating the camera to start here. And then fly all the way back. So this is kind of going to be like a bit of a drone shot. So if we come over to our flip book and make sure that we change the size because we're using an anamorphic style crop so we need to just change this to 800 and then let's check out this quick flip book so i've just generated this flip book so we can take a look at how the camera is moving and if you come over to animation on here I've just created a linear movement. So if you select our animation points, our keyframes, a keyframe on the first frame and the last frame, and if you come down to function, it was originally set to, I think, Bezier. Um, Bezier. And this is kind of a more natural movement. Like if you were a person moving, you might have something like this. But I wanted a drone sort of look, like a drone flying at a constant speed. So I've set that to linear, and that's how we get that constant flying back motion of the camera. And what I've done here is I've just put down these nodes so we can read in, you know, just the smoke. So if I come over here and we just look at this node, we've got just our smoke and a pyro bake node to create a shader for that and same again for the lava smoke we don't have anything it's just it's just a smoke really our trails so our trails are actually particles and so what we did next so what we did next is the same thing that we've done many times before is we're, we're negating that age so as they get older they sort of die off 
and we are fitting that range between two and one and um, we're creating some more contrast over there. Here we were using the alpha attribute to create some density and then we're going to rasterize that density and now we have these trails. Once again, I'm just putting down a pyro node so that I can create a shader for this. And you can control how dense it is or how light it is by coming over here. And again, just saving that out to disk and putting a null out here so we can read this in, in Solaris. As for the particles, here we're creating some P scale. We're putting an add node down just to make sure that we only have points and saving those out to disk and a null so that we can read that in. And I put down this copy to points so we can get a good idea of the actual size of our particles. So you can see the, 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 um, the lighter ones have bigger points and the darker ones have smaller points. From there, I wanted to create a geometry light for these particles. So what I've done is I've come over to VDB from particles Here's our voxel scale. And next I'm going to just convert VDB to polygons. So we now have all of these particles as a geo. And I've turned the adaptivity up so just so that it's not super high res. And I've put down an attribute transfer to transfer the color. And we can see that if we turn our lights off here. So just transferring the CD to the points. And once again, cache that to disk and put a null so we can read that in Solaris. Next up, we've got a volume fog. And this is going to blot out our whole scene. So basically, all I did is I'm reading in the mountain. So we've got that and then we're creating a bound, which is just going to make a box around our geometry. And then I'm transforming that box up seven times. So quite big. I probably could have gotten away with a, a, a smaller bound, but that's what it did in these settings. And then used a VDB from particles set to density. And it's obviously got a, a very high voxel scale because if you don't have that you're most certainly going to crash your machine so we now have this out as a fog and again putting down an out fog so we can read that in in solaris so very simple for a volume fog and then this is just the opening of our vo volcano just deleting the attributes to make some cleanup and putting down a color, which I don't think I'm using. Might as well turn that off, although it's on in my system. So I'm just going to keep that on for now, but I don't think we're using the point color in the shader. So this may not be necessary. And then a null for the geo light um, to, to be in karma once again. But this is coming from here in our simulation section. And as you can see, we're just using a group to group part of the volcano, the top part, blasting everything, poly extruding, and saving that out to this. So that's where that geometry is coming from. And last but not least is an ocean. So what we're doing is we just have a grid and we're using, putting down a now, we're going to read this in and we're creating an ocean spectra node. Sabre has covered this in our ocean rendering tutorial, which you can see on our YouTube for free. And basically what we do is we use this, these ocean spectras. We use these ocean spectrum nodes to create deformation on our geometry like this. And what we're really doing is we're just saving out a file, which is uh, the ocean spectra. And this file gets read in as our shader. And what Karma or Mantra will do is that it will create this deformation on this plane. So we just feed it a plane, something boring like this, and Karma will dice this for us, and it will create this deformation that we've created here. 
Um, like I said, this is covered in the tutorial that Saber uploaded. So you go and check that out if you want a bit more in detail with that. And we can dive into Solaris now and we can take a look at how to shade that, read in that spectra file and create that deformation in the shader. So if we come up to this uh, this view, we've I'm currently looking at build and we want to change this to Solaris. And then coming over here, we can see that we've changed to our stage view. And you can ignore these. I was just experimenting with a few things, but this is our main render setup here. So first of all, I want to look through our camera four, which is getting read in through this scene import cameras. So without this node, you're not going to be able to access the, the cameras that we have in SOPS. But I've, I've, I'm reading in the cameras um, with this node and let's give it a bit of time. And if we switch to Karma and I'm currently just looking at the fog, let's change to our ocean. And we can, we can see now we've got that grid that we created and it's been diced at render time and the deformation of the ocean surface has been applied to it. And that's all happening in the shader. So I'm just going to give a, a quick overview of this entire network first and then we'll come back to talking about that shader. So here we have a SOP import and this is just like a merge that you have in SOPs and you can create, you can copy the null from SOPs and just paste that here and you know that's going to give us our lava particles same thing for the smoke i'm reading in this is the lava smoke our trails this is our geometry light this is the geometry light of the top this is our main smoke simulation our ocean our mountain and here we have some lights. So this dome light is like a, a, an HDRI that I got from HDRI Haven. Um, I've put on this tag and I've labeled it ENV an environment light. And as you can see here, I'm reading in this, this is our HDRI that you guys can download from, from HDRI Haven. And I was trying to match a particular reference. So I've given it a bit of a purple tint. So this is the reference that I was looking at. So I wanted to give it this sort of purplish blue sort of look. So that's why I've tinted our HRI just a little bit. Um, then we have a, a side light. And the, the objects are all going to this merge. Our lights are all going to this merge. We merge those together. As you can see now we have you know, the intensity of this is turned down a bit because I wanted quite a dark night scene. The side light is just looking at our volcano from the side, so creating some sort of back rim light, sort of um, backlit effect. And then we're going to put down a material library node. And this is where we can put all our shaders. So this is where all our shaders take place. Next up is our assigned materials, and this is where we apply the shaders. And you need to take the, the the objects and the shaders from here. So, for instance, this geolite, we take this geolite and you would drag it up from here. And then we come to our materials. So we need the lava light. And we drag that here. And that's how I'm populating this section here. Next up because we have geometry lights we got to do a bit of extra work to get those to work and so what we're doing is is same again i've selected the geometry lights opening and the geometry lights here from the lava and i've dragged that up here so that's going to create you know so these settings are going to apply to to those primitives we've got the light sample set there and i've set this to to, to negative primary and what that means is is that it's only going to light up it's only going to light up secondary secondary light bounces meaning that we won't see the geometry light the geometry light's going to be invisible as you, you can see the lava here but that's coming from the particles um in fact if we come over to the mountain here 
So if we just take a look at that. You can see we're getting this illumination on the mountain, but we don't, this is not actually particles. This is just the illumination coming from, from our geometry lights. Or if we take a look at the smoke. So here we can see the illumination on just the smoke, but we're not actually seeing that light. And that is because we've got the set to negative primary. If we were to say visible all, Now we can actually see that geometry that create is creating that light. And that's not what we want. So we're going to say invisible to primary rays phantom. And that's going to yeah make it invisible. So we also want to say um, treat light. Yes, this is on um, these are settings. And that's almost it for our geometry light settings. The other thing to mention is that the shader for these are very important. Um, the, the light intensity and stuff like that is all coming from the shader. So if we come onto this lava light, it's a principal shader. We're using the point color. And the most important part here is the emission. So like, like again, we're using point color and you can control the intensity using this emission intensity. So in this case, it's set to, to five, and this is for the lava light, and this opening is coming from the emission here. And um, remember, I had that color node on that piece of geometry, and I said, well, we weren't using it. It's just because I set the red color here, and it was easier to tweak things in Karma than it was in SOPS. So that's why um, I've ticked off use point color and I just wanted a red light shining up because that's that's what I could see in my reference was kind of like this red light illuminating um, the smoke here. So that's it for those two shaders. And we, like I mentioned before, we've got this import scene cameras. That just means that we can access our cameras now. I'm using this uh, render geometry to create motion blur and you need to put down a cache and set to cache rolling frames in order to get motion blur to work correctly. And I'm using this as a, I'm using this node as a mat. So let's actually just rename this to mat. And this is also a mat. Mat. So these are these are basically all I'm just doing is I'm I'm selecting the 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 objects that I don't want to see and I'm matting them out by coming down to shader and setting this to matte. And so now in this case the only thing I don't have selected here is our ocean. So we're only going to see our ocean. We've got another render settings node here if I wanted to tweak render settings. And I've just put down a karma node so we can save this out to disk. And one thing to note, I intend to have this as um, 1920 by 800, so this anamorphic style look, but I've just times the um, the resolution to two because what we're gonna do is, is that this is gonna be quite a noisy render in order to get this out in time. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the noise in there and then I'm gonna denoise it and then scale it back down to 1920 by 800 and comp it um, in, in that resolution. It's just that you lose some of the details when you when you do the denoise process. But by rendering it two times as big, then denoising and then scaling it down, you retain a lot more detail in your image and it works out to be a lot faster um, in terms of render time. And Sabre's also covered this in more detail in his um, Karma tutorial where he goes over all the settings. So, you, you know, go through that tutorial, make sure that you're getting the settings that you want based on, you know, how much time you've got to render this out. And it's pretty much the same again. Um, I'm, I'm, for this time, the only thing I've changed here is I'm, I'm changing what I want to mat out. So in this case, we're matting out the particles, the mountain, and the ocean and so with that we now going to get just our volume elements our smoke here we're going to do our mountain and here we're going to have our particles 
if you want to turn the background off we can just come here and turn that off and make this dark and that's really it for our rendering um so i'm going to render this out now and oh the one thing i'm forgetting is the fog i could have done that here and just mastered things out but in this case i actually just duplicated the entire network because i was experimenting a bit and so we've got our fog reading in here and in this case i put the mat up here so these are all matting out um our geometry if you just put this you know it's set to basically it's taking in what's coming in and it sets it to mat you can mat these things out here instead of like putting a name you know if i were to put this down here you'd put a name and then you'd mat it out that way but i'm just using this node as a mat out here um and then so the the fog's coming in exactly the same we have our fog here i should also i forgot to mention our shaders so we've got this fog shader here and everything else is matted out and now we're getting this environment fog that we can layer over in comp one thing i'm forgetting to tell you is the materials for our ocean shader so remember we saved out that ocean spectra and that's just getting rid in here at displacement and this this is a very intelligent um shader and it's just going to apply that deformation at render time as for everything else these are our settings it's pretty straightforward the only thing to note really is where to read in that ocean spectra of volcano smoke this is all just created with if i jump back to sops It was created with this pyrobake node. So if I come over to this pyrobake node and I come to quick setups, I can just say create material and I want to say custom location. And that way I can come over to stage and I can export our shader to stage that way. That way we have the exact same look that we set up in SOPS as we do in stage and that will place our shaders here so i've already done that and that's it for our shaders and rendering so the very last thing we have is this cop network so if we dive inside and we come over to composite view here i'm just reading in the the volumes i ended up rendering out the volumes the ocean the mountain the lava all that stuff separately and i'm just reading in that the volumes render here and i've put a ai denoise here and then a rop output and i can now render out just the denoised version of my render cool so i hope you guys learned something and i will see you next time thank you very much for watching bye